Well, good evening, everyone. Hope your day's gone great. Uncle Kerry here. Tonight I'd like to speak a little bit about sovereignty. Sovereign, the meaning of the word is so over reigns. Which simply means that you're in control of the reins. When the Constitution was drafted, it gave us a republic, not a democracy, as they claim now. This republic gave us our sovereignty, which meant we were in charge of our own lives and destiny. Also that we, the people, in fact, were in control of our elected representatives. Amendments 9 and 10 of the Constitution explain that best. Are we still sovereign? Yes and no. Under the Constitution, we are still sovereign citizens of our individual state. The Republic basically made each state into its own country, hence the United States. By all rights today, we still are sovereign. But two things in history change the dynamic of our sovereignty. The 14th Amendment and the Act of 1871. I believe it was in uh, 1868, the 14th Amendment was introduced as a way to make newly freed slaves into American citizens. Not sovereign citizens, though, mind you. Also written into that amendment was a way to try and change the status of sovereign citizen. The Act of 1871 would virtually close the deal. Now, on February 21st, 1871, the 41st Congress, because of the Civil War, needed money to sustain the Republic. So they passed the Act of 1871. Basically, they wanted to borrow money from the international banking community. But the bankers said, oh, no, no, no. We want collateral. So they offered up our government capital, the 10 square miles of the District of Columbia, as collateral. This act converted our republic's government into a corporation, the United States of America Incorporated, all in capital letters, which in turn made the government no longer accountable to the sovereign citizens. That 10 square mile property of ours would now be only accountable to the banks and the kings and queens that ran them. Well, after a while the corporation, under the wording of the 14th Amendment, figured out a way to illegally force sovereign citizens into contractual second-class servants of the corporation. That was done by income tax, social security numbers, driver's license, and so on. Why? Hmm. Because the Act of 1871 was only to have authority over the 10 square miles of the District of Columbia and never to infringe on the Republic and its citizens. But that would never be enough for the, for the international bankers or the corporation for that matter. So through loopholes of corruption our sovereignty was compromised. 
Therefore, any law that was created after the ten common laws stated in our republic's constitution are unlawful to the republic. Basically, it means that they made a way to make us slaves of the corporation. But yet, we still are sovereign through our states. The states have the right to choose to follow federal law or not. Excuse me. We have only ten common laws in this country, our republic. They're listed in the original ten of the Constitution. All the rest of them really don't mean anything. But we adhere to them. We get arrested for them. <clears throat> These are all corporation generated laws. All I did wanted to do by explaining some of these things was to know that we have always been a sovereign nation but basically we were raped of that right and everything against the Constitution was perpetrated against us but we let it happen because in essence we really didn't know better but now it's coming to light that through study, research, and all those things that a lot of us are seeing the light and seeing what the corporate government has done and keeps doing to us. Anyway, I just thought I'd throw a couple things out there everybody think about for a little bit. Uh, as always, glad for you to see me again. Hope you all have a great night. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks for listening. Bye-bye.